What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Geek, and today I'm talking about Power Automate, I'm talking about expressions, and I'm going to talk about the get future time function in the date and time functions collection. So get future time is kind of what it sounds like. It's the ability to get a timestamp, uh, a date and time uh, back for a date in the future. And we can pass in some parameters to find out what that future time will be. This could be used if you are creating a task for a salesperson for say a week in advance. You could um, use this function to um, pass in seven days and then create a task. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm in Power Automate here, uh, I've got a manual trigger flow and I've got a compose action here. So in the compose, I'm going to click into the inputs, go over to expression, scroll down until we get to date and time, and we're going to expand date and time and we see we've got this get future time function here. So get future time has three parameters, it has interval, has time unit and then has format with a question mark. So wherever you see the question mark, that means that this is an optional parameter. So we don't actually need to pass this in at all. So the description says returns a timestamp uh, that is the current time plus the specific time interval. So that's actually an important thing to note compared to my last video on add to time. Add to time allows you to pass in a timestamp, add an interval, the time unit and the format this actually requires you to um, use the current time and this is current time at UTC because all flows inside Power Automate run in UTC time. So if we click get future time and then we want to add an interval so um, you can add any numbers you want um, into this so we could add the number six put comma uh, and then the actual time unit is what we want to add. So we can add a second, a minute, an hour, day, uh, month, or year. And each one of those is denoted by their singular name. So if I open um, some quotation marks and write uh, month, for instance, it's not I'm adding six months, I'm adding six month, and that's the format of it. Um, and we also have this optional parameter of, um, of formatting it, but I'm not going to do that for now. So we click OK, uh, get future time, we'll click test, uh, I'll perform the trigger action, run the flow, uh, click done, run successfully, and we can see that the date it's coming back with is the 28th of the 7th, 2020, because again, this is uh, the UTC style format, so it goes year, uh, month, day, and then the time. So um, this is saying it's going to be six months from now. So I'm actually recording this on the 28th of January, and this is saying it'll be the, um, I'm getting the time out as the 28th of um, July, which is good. That's what we want. Now, what we can also do is we can also format this as well. So if I click the uh, action itself, I can update it. <coughs> I click in here and I could format it, um, say, um, D. Now, um, putting the letter D in there, that's actually a, a, ty a type of formatting. Um, there's an ISO standard that defines formatting of time uh, and things like that, um, which we kind of covered in one of my last videos. So if I update that now, um, no updates, um, we can run the test again and we can see what it outputs this time. Run successfully. And we can now say, it, now see it says Tuesday, July 28th, 2020. That is, the, that is the output that you would get if you formatted it in that way. So, um, for instance, if you wanted to put this on like a quote that you're sending to customers and you needed um, a compose action to go into a specific field, uh, sorry, a date to go into a specific field and you want to format like that, you can do it like this. There are multiple other ways that you can format this data as well. Um, you know, change around the years, the dates. Um, you know, there's the international format for um, the dates, uh, which which is you know day, month, year. Then there is also the the American format, which is uh, month, day, year. Um, and then there's like a, you know international standards. Um, so this is you know UTC is like year, month, day, for instance. 
So you can format it in a bunch of different formats and you can find all those formats uh, in the ISO standard. Um, if you look at the doc site for Power Automate, it actually uh, links off to those formats and to the standards so you know how to um, you know how to format that. But I will leave a link to uh, those formats in the comments in the description box down below so that you can check those out for yourself and then start playing around with them. So I hope this is useful. Um, the reason you would use a, uh, a, a, a expression instead of there is an action that you can use is that you can put multiple things inside the expression. So you could do multiple formats and, and multiple things and get that data out. Um, the action is like a one block thing. So it's a single step that does the convert and then you can use it later on, uh, which is a little bit easier from a user standpoint. So I have a video covering that. But if you want to be doing lots of data manipulation or um, a bunch of different things, you may not want to clutter up your flow with multiple steps to do various conversions and things like that. So that's where expression is a little bit easier to work with. So it's different tools for different jobs. And you need to define decide the right one for your requirements. Um, do you know how to use this function? I want to know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's always appreciated. And I'll see you next time.